welcome everybody as we are here for another week of pre-show before going into our tomorrow Valorant CEA Fall Tournament. I am Rich Rand here. It is only going to be me for the time being. There was some issues in regards to getting our connectivity here, so I'll be able to at least walk you through this pre-show leading into, again, our third actual week of the Swiss format of our Valorant tournament. And it's been absolutely exciting to see most recently the past week's broadcast that we had between Walmart and Intel, which were the two focused teams that we saw go head to head. Again, with these two teams, it was a lot more of a rivalry between the two, and there was a lot of early game competition before one team finally was able to outmaneuver and control their opponent. We saw Intel come through, finally claiming the victory 13 to four in the end of it. So they are going to just continue to move through with another victory in their Swiss format. And again, for those that are curious, this is just our consistent pre-show that we do before every Saturday early morning at 11 PST or afternoon and evening for others in the time zone for our CEA Valorant esports that is honestly just a really amazing organization i know that i say it every time but we want to just give you an idea that cea is the corporate esports association that you know brings a virtual dynamic to the conventional you know traditional sports that we see as baseball football basketball and a plethora of many that we see through a lot of corporate you know organizations but when it comes to this we get to put them in the virtual world and with it being valorant we've got seven game titles for cea and it's a really really again great opportunity to kind of change up the dynamic i know for myself that i am attempting to try and get my company to do the same thing to be involved with this because cea allows these corporate individuals to play for a prize pool that goes towards a charity of their choice which is again in the times that we are in now absolutely critical and necessary for us to support ourselves and those around us. So with us going into this, we, like I said, had just our week two completed in the Swiss format as we enter into our week three, which is going to be tomorrow at 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. PST. And we've got some nice teams that are going to be showing up for this. Now, for this, it's going to be, again, week three of the eight-week Swiss. So, we're getting almost to that halfway point of where teams are starting to meld, find some, you know, comfort in competing in this type of tournament environment. Because as we've had interviews prior, there have been a lot of individuals that are either newer to a competitive scene or even just a tournament environment as a whole. So, being able to enter into this and start joining in this really competitive nature but outside of the bane of i think all of our existences that is normal competitive valorant sometimes when you get completely squashed you can actually find yourself working at an organized team for a really really great cause for your charity of choice and going into today we are lucky enough to have two interviewers with us we do have from general motors we also do have from red hat again both of those teams it is going to be a lovely play on to general motors which is generous Motors, yes, indeed, that is their team name, along with Red Hat being a very similar, they're going to do Red Hat Uplink. I am not surprised, probably there is going to be a cipher anyways in the composition that we see because it is such an OP agent, but even more so because they have the word Uplink in their, you know, Red Hat, Red Hat, Cypher Hat, you know, Neural Theft, that kind of stuff, figuring it out, trying to make a joke here, but it's okay. If you're looking at me just going face palm, that's fine. I'm doing it too, literally. But as we're going to get into this, like I said, both of these teams are continuing through the Swiss as we're reaching towards that halfway point. So again, this previous week showed that there were two teams that were a little bit more competitive, not as much one-sided, but the one key component, which we'll talk about a little bit later in today's broadcast, is adaptation. How Intel specifically was able to take Intel <laughs> of their opponent and use it over the course of the round that we saw. So... Going into this, I'm really looking forward to see how General Motors and Red Hat are going to compete against one another going into this weekend. And we'll have a chance to talk to one of the captains and one as a player, which we haven't had a chance to do. So it'll be nice to get a little bit of a frame of mind difference going from, you know, the individual who organizes the whole team for this tournament and one being, you know, among the ranks and working side by side with the rest of the teammates and how they feel that the leadership for their captain is overseeing them. 
And as we're going to go into the two teams, we'll talk a little bit about their charities. So we have General Motors, again, Generous Motors, is their charity of choice using Games for Change. Founded in 2004, Games for Change empowers game creators and social innovators to drive real-world changes using games and technology that help people to learn, improve their communication, and contribute to make the world a better place. Which, again, right now better place is what we need and you know they convene stock stakeholders through their annual g4c festivals along with fostering the exchange of ideas and resources through workshops and consulting projects they inspire youth to explore and in civil issues and learn 21st century and stem skills again science technology engineering and mathematics which again is a very very big focus for students to challenge them and train educators to run game design classes and how they actually uh, deal with impact games, which is also really quite fascinating. Like I find that really interesting. And they inc inc uh, they incubate projects through their game design challenges and executive production experience in collaboration with you know buildings. There's there's so many different dynamics that it's it's really quite fascinating to see you know that be an organization to support. And that's again one of those large varieties that we've seen so far over the course of these weeks from these teams. And now when it comes to Red Hat, though, again, Red Hat Uplink, they're using Crescent Cove. So Crescent Cove offers care and support to children and young adults with a shortened life expectancy and their families who love them and able to be around. This is actually a, a, a really, really unique uh, history and stat that I looked at when I was looking up the uh, organization and just the charity that around the United States, there are over 4,700 hospice homes for adults. But when it comes to the Crescent Cove uh, respite and hospice home for kids in Minnesota's first and only home designed just for children and their unique needs. And it's just the third of its kind in the United States. So now this is starting to grow an opportunity to have these facilities and these locations for individuals that are in a younger age range in that kid realm. Uh, and it's, you know, a vibrant and joyful home away from home with a the goal to help families in to feel embraced, assured, and celebrated. So again, both of these great, great charities among so many that we've had involved. And you know, that's a driving force when it comes to a lot of these teams fighting towards, you know, that number one spot. Again, there is just an opportunity to see these teams come together where it's communication builder, it develops relationships amongst the corporate environment, but it's also for a good cause. So there's so many different dynamics to it. And like I said, for CEA having seven titles overall, accumulatively, the winners will have also been donating over $30,000 to charity. So this is not a sum of money to just scoff at. Like there is quite a bit going to these charities across the board for all of the seven game titles. So it really is exciting to see. And again, Valorant being the newer one this year, that they are involving in this fall season because of its release is a really great dynamic. Also, a little bit of funness for us to see, you know, how these uh, corporate members and uh, frontline workers like myself in the morning can play on the on the regular. So that's that's a really exciting part of it. Now, when we take a look though at the the whole of what recently happened, we're looking forward to seeing what happened this or happens this week with General Motors and Red Hat. But we do have to talk a little bit about the week prior. And the week prior, as I've said a couple of times already, has really focused on development. Because the few weeks prior, it was a little bit more one-sided. You could, in a Swiss match, notice that you have somebody of very, very high skill level versus someone who is in still development, which we saw through interviews, that there are some individuals on the teams that aren't presently, you know, the like most knowledgeable of the game, but they're learning, they're growing, they're understanding, and their captains are directing them into the right place to be a confident player for their team and for their charity that they're looking to reach. But Let's talk a little bit about this previous week when it came to Walmart and Intel. Now, again, at the start of this, we had Walmart manage to take two early points. But the one thing to start focusing on is, like I said, the early adaptation that came out by Intel. Now, when we take a look at Intel, the biggest thing is that this team has a combination of both independently skilled individuals with a high skill cap, but also the ability to maintain a well-organized team composition. Walmart had the same thing early, with G2G being a really big focus to get an advantage early, allowing them to snowball to get those first two points. But Intel here, most notably when it came to this two-round deficit in the early moments, Intel found themselves having to really change their mentality, going in aggressive, and 
heavily utilizing their agent's ability kit to try and gain the advantage before Walmart is able to set up. Both rounds prior, Walmart had managed to do so. But when it comes now to these moments and you start to see Intel digesting this information and learning from it. There is no adaptation coming out from Walmart. There are moments here and there. And the one thing I do really want to highlight in this, even though once this, you know, Intel victory comes through on this side, a big highlight is Walmart respecting this enemy team Intel. One most specifically is in this early map when it came to Colonel. Colonel on the Cypher had the Operator early by, mind you, really focusing to save to get that Operator in these early rounds to have defensively, and knows when to escape, doesn't want to stick around and give up that extremely valuable tool, the Operator, going into this, especially when you're a Cypher. So again, that's something to really see from both sides is that there's an aggression coming through by Intel, starting to understand what they have to do to change this momentum. But there is still a level of respect in the starting point of this fight between these two teams. But as I say that, one match after another, we continue to find that Intel was exploiting weaknesses once again, finding themselves taking the same point, and now Colonel to take a little bit of a different aggressive peak here which in the long run never really favors them and after these aggressive peaks started trickling in it became a very resonating factor for the rest of the night and or correction rest of the day between these two teams and that is going to now see intel looking to really take advantage and roll with this strategy so with that losing an early operator, you've got a buy going out. Colonel still now having enough to invest into another one. So it's not like they lost out on it because, again, held on to it. Didn't have to buy. Kept themselves in a great position. But again, not, not to, like, dive too much into it. But here is another moment where G2G, mind you, was doing a stellar job on this Sova for Walmart. Constantly finding value. Hunter's Fury the rounds prior. Getting a double kill in the garage choke. But it's where these movements, just like that, where you see... A very forward press after not gathering the full amount of information necessary to allow yourself to be into a most advantageous position. And because you're down these numbers, there is a clever play up top by Walmart. But when you block off the smoke to the right, you have the cypher cage as well. A lot's being committed to it. You don't have to worry about anyone getting you from that upper rafter location that the only place to look is the left. And that's where you're going to see the omen reside and getting that takedown so quickly. We're going to take a look at it here once again and just acknowledge... There is vision coming out here from the Sova just around the corner outside of Garage. The dart has been planted, so the intel is there. There is one member, but to peek and push this far with, mind you, barely even jiggling, you see one, which is also not the individual you tagged when you came around that corner. You are all alone, only having Colonel in the very far, in the back line with the operator who doesn't even have a sight line here. So Walmart, again, really started to just keep this aggression forward on the defensive side, which I would have liked to see a little bit more reservation going into this. You had the information, knowing that there's three, you have positioning on this, and now you could use a combination of the Sova, the Omen, and the Cypher on this defensive side of B to prepare for this engagement or force a rotation out by Intel to maybe have them go towards that mid area where you have the jet play over looking this middle section and mid bot or even transitioning all the way to A. Unfortunately, as it continued on through this, we saw Intel rotate slides and really start to lay into the rest of this. But Walmart kept up for the early portions of this game. It was a four to four back and forth constantly between these two until the sides swapped and there was a reset. And the other thing to really highlight here as well when it came to individual play, as I stated earlier, is that Yan on this jet and the just game sense that we see here is absolutely stellar. Gets the couple of picks out early, especially knowing that the spike holder is there. This is where you had a numbers advantage for Walmart and Intel playing that window perfectly and Jet being very aware from Yan gets this double pick. Two that are remaining. Now, the really intense part is coming up when knowing how to use your kit. And that's something we're actually going to talk about when we get to the pro play highlights, as we've done every week just after this. So... Jan is waiting patiently, knowing that, again, it's only one remaining member. Has to get the spike. 
rotates back around and finds cover. But hearing the spike plant, the dash comes through, does get there in time. The just swiftness and lack of hesitation allows Yon to get there before you can have the responsiveness from Walmart with the cipher to get that pick from the side angle because you could hear the dash. That aerial dash is a very, very huge information give and throw to letting you know exactly where the positioning was. And once again, if Walmart was able to hold on to that, that would have actually allowed potentially a good recontest or quality recontest to get this other point and continue on through these maps. But as I said, that is going to be the win here that we saw for Intel as a whole from the week prior. But, but there is, in addition to not only just the adaptation coming out from Intel, the knowledge of just independent gameplay, the one I really want to focus on is this Phoenix from Intel. There was some absolutely constant just forward pressing aggression that really started to speak volumes once getting into the mid part of this game free was constantly flashing every corner finding value round after round after round and this consistency and utilization of these abilities would just basically allow intel to have so much more space getting to the point effectively finding that pick potential to gain the numbers advantage and even if you are down or out of a fight in numbers, this is a moment as well. Using the run it back, leading out into the corner, getting that takedown onto the jet, and now you find yourself at an even playing field, two versus two, and you've got Colonel low on Walmart. So the Phoenix, I would have to honestly say, from Intel, Free was a real MVP all around. Even with that pickup coming and taking the counterpart, there is still a double kill that came through. And again, having hot hands up, constantly the flash is around the corner back to back always leading into rooms confidently and you can see it here even more so this is still in that early portion of the game where you had free going to reset and position themselves over by a site waiting to peak using the whole team focusing that ramps a second time around does get the double flash coming up top making sure that you can prevent any sort of vision and the team falls in suit and even with a two kill going through for officer donut here's the pickup throws the flash second around the box this was just a repeated method over and over and over again and this is something that walmart could not adapt to and that's the really unfortunate part and as we got like again three to three now these rounds are continuing to be closer and closer flash comes through finds himself having to play a little bit more covered flash again around the side constantly blinding anybody necessary and just this just rapid fire use of these abilities is how walmart could never slow the momentum there's also a lot of even usage with the wall for vision coming out from the phoenix blocking these doorways you can see it happen multiple occasions where honestly it's securing these points and there's nothing that walmart could do in these occasions to really prevent it and they found themselves in very difficult positions and really had to force themselves into one a numbers disadvantage but also were fearful to peak and it was never able for intel to really let up ultimately as i said that's like a really really key thing we'll look at this one last usage here when it came to the phoenix especially when there was an opportunity for walmart again to continuously learn from this push but it never worked it unfortunately came up here's another one of the usage to block that wall and again it it allows intel to reduce the amount of positions at which the walmart can engage from they're either going to cover garage or they're going to look up to rafter and window so because of those really key plays using those abilities it allows that to ultimately give intel the strength throughout this game that we just recently saw so i'm really really curious to see with these two individuals that we have for interviews coming up, what they're going to look to have bringing in their own. Are we going to see Phoenix? Will we see some unique play? I know Moxie's not here, so I'm going to throw it out for her. Uh, maybe we'll see some Sage. Maybe she gets some Sage walls. Probably not, but we're going to try and see if that's possible because it could be a comfort pick. So with that being said, we are able to get these two individuals hopped in. So don't go anywhere because we have an interview coming up here in just a moment as we're going to start off with General Motors, a.k.a. Generous Motors. Uh, the Captain Zuigus, if I am saying that correctly. So we will be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere because we're going to go and want to get the inside mindset of what this weekend holds for this team.
Hello and welcome back, everybody, as we are here with our amazing captain, as I said before the break. It is going to be Zweigoose. Again, I said that wrong before, but we're going to get it correct as we enter into this. From General Mortar Motors. See, I can't even get that right now. But it's going to be Generous Motors is the team. I was getting those mixed up. So how are you doing, Zweigu? It is so exciting to have you here today. Good, man. I'm excited to be here. Excited to uh, to represent the East Coast a little bit. I know a lot of these guys are West Coast teams, so happy to, uh, you know... Give you a little Detroit flavor. Well, I, I am very, very grateful. I know we were talking about it. I got that lovely skyline for you in the background, just making you feel right at home. I mean, we're all sitting at home for cool. a lot more hours of the day, so that's probably got to feel at least a little bit of a nice ambient feel for you. <laughs> yep, that's right. I can pretend like I'm outside. I can pretend <laughs> like I can leave and go over to Canada. That's, right? That's my favorite fun fact about Detroit. And yeah. for a lot of us, we generally we go south to go to Canada. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> for me right, being in Illinois, point. I always have to look up to go anywhere when it comes to that. So that is that's, that's interesting, right. though, for the for the change up for you. Well, you know, with you with you coming in and talking about this, I know we've been doing this for all captains that have been you know interviewed. So tell us a little bit, you know, about yourself, how you got involved uh, as a captain for Valorant, involved with CEA, and also just you know you being with General Motors. Sure. Um, so my dad's worked at GM since I was a kid. So it's just kind of a, a family name. And that's common to families around here, right? You got you got lifers. So it was just kind of a fitting thing. I, I work in IT and it's actually interesting. Our, our team comp is not all IT people. We're not all tech people. We have vehicle engineers. We have, you know, manufacturing engineers. We got all sorts of stuff on the team. Um, but as far as, as getting into Valorant, uh, I mean, I was a big Counter-Strike guy for years. Okay. Um, uh, I, used, I used to play, I used to, play all the time frankly and with next <laughs> sebo admin for anyone who used to play counter strike um they might know what that is and so it just valorant was just a refreshing twist on you know a proven concept and so it was nice to kind of make some changes and at first i was really skeptical of it i didn't know how i felt about you know some of the abilities you know I, I liked the simplicity of counter-strike's grenades and approach to it but once i got beta access and started to play a little bit my opinions changed very quickly right did a really good job making the game feel good they made the game comfortable they made the game approachable they took some of the parts that complicate counter-strike and they riotized it and they took it out and they simplified that and it, it just made the game a lot of fun um and back in the day with After Hours, I used to help them with Counter-Strike. And so when I heard that CEA was picking up Valorant, I figured it's time for me to get in on the competing end of things and, and get a team together and see if we can't put out the best we can and really get some wins. Well, that's great to, you know, hear you being a part of After Hours. I myself was, you know, involved with that as well. To see you now transition to this with that Valorant coming out, that's really exciting. But, you know, I really want to fixate on the, you know, the, the Counter-Strike history and you being very involved with it. And I really like how you use the word and term riotized it. I'm probably going to have to <laughs> take that from you <laughs> if that's okay, because that was a great way. That's... To describe it. should be it. in the dictionary. Right? It really should. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, there's a lot of things in the dictionary that probably shouldn't be. So that one could definitely <laughs> be placed in there. Uh, but now for you coming in from that type of, you know, history and mindset, uh, how has that brought you to leading your team into preparing for this tournament? Do you feel that you weighed a lot on your history of it? Or is there still a lot of, you know, evolution? Because like you said, it is very different. The abilities are different. You have to learn this type of twist that has been put on it. How is your transition going from CSGO to Valorant and displaying that to your team? Which, by the way, you said is a vast different array of individuals, not just only relying in that IT mindset of individuals. Yeah, so... So really what makes it more complicated than anything else is the fact that this game is still being worked on, so mm -hmm. to speak, like game changing patches and Counter-Strike. I mean, when's the last time you saw one of those? True. Um, so so when we have week to week new changes coming out and they're drastically changing gunplay with some of the op changes recently, they changed the Vandal when, you know, they're actively changing the way certain game mechanics work. That is realistically more challenging than actually taking anything that was counter-strike related um because we we can keep some of the same concepts right being able to trade trade entry kills communicating strong in order to ensure that we do that you know talking out your ability usage not just throwing in a smoke or a flash and expecting something to happen you have to talk through it you know you have to recognize there's four other people out there playing with you right um so so myself with the counter-strike history and we got guys that have competitive video game history in general 
we understand that communicating through this stuff is half of it. It's one thing to sit there into the wee hours of the morning and play video games <laughs> and just let your eyes glaze over. But if you want to take it competitively, you have to communicate. And we have a wide array of job titles and ranks on our team. We don't have the luxury of having multiple teams. Mm -hmm. So we have all the way from bronze to diamond on our team. So oh, when wow. it comes down to it, we focus more on, on strategy and communicating and, and attitude more than we do being the best aimers out there, right? We, we can, we've had games where some of our bronze and silver players almost top frag because we put them in the position to succeed and they pop off and they have these rounds and it's just like we just roll with that momentum and that energy and we just push it. And, and that's, that's really what Counter-Strike's taught me with esports is just to, just to go with the punches and have fun with it and communicate strong and recognize that the other people playing with you, you're not playing ranked ladder. People aren't out there for themselves. They're out there for the team. And, and that, that kind of echoes strongly with GM in general too. Well, I'm really excited to hear that. Cause again, that's always, especially when it comes into these Swiss rounds, you know, it's you're, you're being placed against individuals. And, you know, like you said, some other companies who have multiple teams in all different rankings and brackets that you mm -hmm. can compare. So for you, culminating those individuals and having that understanding of the strength differential and knowing who and how to adapt in the game moving forward, that's going to really lend you a really great overall value towards the end of it. Cause that's what we've seen most recently in our week prior where, you know, teams are being able to learn and adjust and dynamically take information from their opponent and change it up. And, you know, with your history and also you having a few other individuals in a tournament space and have been playing in a competitive sense that's got to be very mm -hmm. beneficial for you especially when you kind of communicate and discuss the framework of what your strategies are i would think yeah the interesting thing there is that some of the more competitive gamers we have are starcraft players who aren't playing actively with other people oh, at that okay. exact moment when they're playing you know w with yourself but mm -hmm. but the competitive mindset carries over and that's and that's definitely what's important well i could also see especially with that type of game the very the micro and macro understanding between the two. I mean, that's such an intensely focused game in microseconds. And yep, like little that's... little changes and big outputs, right? Yeah. Like that's 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 the big understanding. You know, one flash might mean two kills or something, you know? Yeah. And I'm really, really looking forward to see how that's going to play. And so as we go into this week, weekend, tomorrow, you know, with the changes that have come through, I know each week prior we've seen a lot more focus on, you know, not really bringing in a Sage, not really bringing in a Viper. Breach just got its recent patch update where it has an additional flash in its kit and just trying to rotate those adjustments. Is there any type of composition, again, not to give too, too much intel, something that you kind of lean on or something that you feel is really structured for you and also what is your preferred agent that you might enjoy seeing so i'll season? come out and say it right now <laughs> and everyone can flame me or they can praise me for it i'm a i'm a viper guy okay oh! and i have been since day one and 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 thankfully thankfully she continues to get more and more love just a little bit at, with every patch and so i get the opportunity to make it less of a meme pick every time i do it but I've felt pressure sometimes to pick other agents just because I want to make sure that we have the right comp for certain circumstances and depending on the map. But I'm kind of getting to a point where I'm going to put my foot down and I'm just going to pick Viper <laughs> no matter what. Because it's a lot of fun to play. If you're good at it, and again, if you communicate it well, your utility can be super good for your team. But if you don't do it well, you have the opportunity to, to hurt your team. Yes. Um, thankfully now, you don't actually take their health away um yes that was a huge change that was big but other other than that we don't with the exception of one other player who we try to put on reyna every chance we get because he's really really good at it we kind of don't even look at the mini map when he's playing reyna because we don't even want to know where he is because if the enemy looks at us maybe they'll like understand that we know where he is and they'll get an advantage mm -hmm. we, we like him to be the secret and he just comes out and gets 4k rounds and we just roll with the punches because he's just going to win rounds for us Okay, well, to, um, pick, to piggyback off that then, who sure. is the individual that we should look to if we are really wanting to focus on some intense gameplay? Who would you yeah, be like, if, man, you got to keep an eye on this person? Yeah, if you're not watching Gamezoid play when, when we're playing, then you're probably not watching the most exciting moments in our rounds. Okay. Well, everyone will have a round where they do well, mm -hmm. guaranteed. But if you're if you're not watching games most of the time, you're gonna miss some of the really crucial moments. I can almost guarantee that. 
Okay. And and are you are you comfortable letting that be known? Is that the Reina player or is that someone different? That yeah, that's, that's our Reina, Reina player. player. <laughs> that's that's game play. Yep. It's no secret, but if we don't know where he's standing, how can anyone know where he's standing? So it's True. always a surprise. But it's I not, mean, we're not giving too much away. They'll yeah. see the pick as soon as the game starts. And I'm and and again, when you play Arena, there is such a high risk, high reward type of mentality to that. Totally, I mean, it, it's it's such a fluid, just dominant force. If you can get that early domino to just fall, it can just sweep whatever is going. in front of it. So, Keep going. Yeah, yep. that's that's really really exciting. So you know, with that being said, is there is there anything that you could you know like want to say or like you know that you're the type of strategy what maps you look towards things like that that you favor you don't favor what you would like to see going into tomorrow yeah i'll sh i can share my hand at this one this one's no secret any team that we've played so far or we've scrimmed against knows this and thankfully the map pool is only four maps because we can guarantee that we can ban this we don't do well on ascent and and ascent <laughs> is a hard map and and i know people just tend to say they hate it but it's just like it's it is a hard map it requires a lot of actually coordinated moves to be successful and good aim duels right and if you're not getting both going at the same time it's tough so we don't do well on ascent but we're generally pretty confident on any other map okay. myself personally we're not if i could be viper and start on defense on haven and play a i'm in my happy spot rotating <laughs> out of rotating out of a on haven is one of the most entertaining ways to play that game when you have to rotate all the way to c because there's about three different, two or three different ways you can get there, right? And and each one of them offers a different challenge when you actually get to the site, and um, that's that's fun. But we're we're confident enough with the way we play and the way we practice on pretty much any map as long as it's not ascent. As <laughs> and we've banked on being able to ban it all season. So if they I drop seven maps on us in the next week. <laughs> Uh, we might be hosed, but thankfully I don't see that happening. So we might just be okay all the way up through, uh, through Christmas. I think, I think your, your sentiment for ascent relies in all teams. <laughs> yeah. I, let's, yeah. Let's be real. Some do well, some really do. And well, I, I, I don't know. It just clicks for them and maybe they had a lucky map. I don't know, but I, I, I know a lot of players certainly agree, but I know that, you know, we've been able to avoid a sense and so i don't, I don't want to find myself there if i can avoid it i mean come on when you say your happy place is haven a i mean you got to look for it as often yeah. as possible it's just that's just you that's right sit there and yep. it's it'll be like that fun moment when you're in a kiddie pool outside of your porch and it's a really hot day and you just got the hose <laughs> and you and just like get the drink. splash <laughs> that's right you just just sit there and pour the hose over your head and splash away yep there you go. That's my happy place. That's how you start. That's, that's how you start the weekend off. Right. Well, yep. I do truly, truly appreciate your time. I don't want to take any more out of your day. It has been an awesome opportunity to speak with you, kind of dig into the mind of you as a captain and, you know, about your team and individuals to look for and, and what your kind of strategy is going into this. So, I mean, it's, it's a super great opportunity to have you be involved with this again for you and your organization and the company going for uh, games for change, which is an amazing organization. There's so many different ones and it's a great one amongst the ranks that we have. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day we've got another interview coming up and honestly is there any is there any last words you'd like to say to either your opponents or people that might be watching that are for gm tuning in i just gotta say hi to my mom you know i'd be <laughs> remiss if i didn't do that and uh i don't know we look forward to seeing red hat tomorrow we scrimmed him once it was a good game but we look forward to having an actual one on the books it's gonna be a good time well we are sending love out to mom as always so don't go anywhere friends because we've got our other interview coming up real soon so be right back friends
Hello and welcome back everybody. We already had our first interview from General Motors and now we get the second coming out from one of the players this time from Red Hat Uplink and it is Mesa Lido, which again we had a discussion just off screen about how to say this right. How are you? How are you doing? And I have to start it out. How, how did this name come into being? Because I know that you said there is no right way to say this. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey Rich. Uh, so yeah, the whole the name thing. You're right. There's no correct way of saying it. It was an auto-generated name for like school, where they give you your first couple initials and then the last uh, few letters of your uh, first name, or sorry, of your last name. And it just kind of happened to have vowels in the right place. And so I thought it was cool. And I like hearing how everyone pronounces it because I sure don't know how to pronounce it. So it's okay. I can That's I can it. very I can very well <laughs> relate to that because my my tag Richrad came from a long time ago guild run where they mistyped Richard and ever since uh, then yeah. it's stuck and even nowadays I... whenever I do anything I literally cannot first start to write Richrad before Richard on formal documents and I have to take a hot second and be like can I get another copy of this sheet that's, <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so I can understand where it's you know a fluke a random luck of the draw and something like that happens so I'm glad it's sometimes for you. yeah you gotta just stick with it you know you gotta, you gotta roll with it so. there's a reason it all comes together well just like we have you being involved with CEA so I know we typically kind of go down the route of talking with the captains how they you know you know found themselves you know leading a team but in this case you know, with you being a player, I'm curious of your take on how you got involved as a player, uh, who is your captain, how did the captain kind of facilitate you in Valorant, and just in general be involved with CEA? Uh, yeah, so I've been at Red Hat for about three years now, and uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I think it was still after hours gaming league maybe, or maybe mm -hmm. they just made the switch, but um, I kind of saw that they had a... a uh, we had like involvement there. I think we had an Overwatch team that did really well and um, saw a post about it and I checked it out and I saw that there was a Counter-Strike team. And so I was like very excited about that and um, wanted to get involved with the Counter-Strike team because I, uh, similar to Zwagus, grew up playing Counter-Strike uh, for over a decade now at this point. And um, similar to him, I didn't play Sivo, but I played in a league called Cal. Okay. And so I had a little bit of experience there uh and i just kind of fell off towards high school but um towards college when global offensive came back out i i picked it back up and um seeing it in the cea league with with red hat's involvement was really exciting um we didn't have a team at that point so i kind of took it upon myself to try to get people together um and i ended up being the captain for that and you know we had a, a rough season last season because we barely had five people and mm -hmm. a lot of times we just had to forfeit because we didn't have enough uh another person to stand in if someone couldn't make it mm -hmm. but the games we did play were a lot of fun and awesome so um when i saw they had a valorant uh division in the league this year i was super excited about that uh i saw nick uh hella energy uh i'm just gonna call him nick it's easier <laughs> <laughs> less syllables um but uh, he was interested in the Valorant team, and I was already involved with the Counter-Strike team, so I didn't really want to be the captain. Um, just, you know, it's a, a bit of a responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we kind of got together and started trying to pull people together for a full team, and we made it happen. So we're here now. And you know what? That's exciting to have you here. Again, we were, you know, talking a little bit with uh, Zwigus about, you know, being General Motors only having really one team. Red Hat, again, not being like, you know, other organizations or companies like Amazon and Walmart where they've got a plethora of teams. So with you and your other individuals that are on your team, do you have a, a wide variety of skill level? And then also, are they, you know, in certain divisions with Red Hat that kind of has made you cross over a little bit to kind of, you know, clunk heads and figure out what works best for you. Yeah, absolutely. So we're actually pretty much in the same boat as GM uh, with our kind of skill distribution. Mm -hmm. We we're everywhere from iron up to diamond and, and pretty consistent throughout there. So we've got like iron, silver, gold, plat and a diamond. And so, um, but yeah, that's actually, we've been facing a lot of the same a lot of the same things he mentioned in terms of uh, just kind of learning and developing those like team-based fundamentals of the gameplay, communication, trading, uh, playing as a team really, um, and not just kind of going out there and each playing our own game. Um, so, but yeah, um, we've got people, we don't really have many people who work together. I think we have a couple guys who came on the team together, 
but overall it's been a really cool uh way to just meet you know guys from all over the company and um kind of work together and bring our different skill sets and different perspectives of the game in um it's been really cool well it's so. very exciting to see that because again when you when you take so many different hats from all over the company and kind of bring them all together to culminate in one space like this it's always really interesting to see what the outcome is uh, and what kind of pitfalls you may encounter to be like all right we have to build up as a team because we have this common goal and when you you know are going towards a charity especially that's something that you know is a driving factor here for us to say you know let's let's work together let's let's grow let's build this and you know give back to that and you know moving forward building your team and finding yourself with all these different individuals how are you preparing as a player because again you used to be a captain and those responsibilities are very high when it comes to a captain overseeing all those individuals now as a player how are you preparing and what are you doing with your team to really engage in proper practice to go into the cea tournament yeah that's a great question so i guess as a player i'm sort of focusing on uh being a, a bit more of a team player and kind of adjusting my gameplay a little bit because um, a lot of times when we practice, uh, we're we're kind of practicing with lower lower end of the skill range. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll jump into like unrateds or something, and um, good it's old really unrateds. Easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like it's easy for someone with like me who has played Counter Strike for a long time, and I have those mechanics down and everything to just kind of take these aim duels and just mm -hmm. kind of stomp on people in those situations. That does not work when you're playing uh, against higher level players. So you need to be a lot more uh, considerate and tactical, I think, and mm -hmm. uh, things like communication and playing together and kind of this awareness of what your team is doing. All of those things are super important. So I'm trying to kind of claw back out of these bad habits that I've been forming during our practice sessions and uh, you know, just playing with my other friends too and um, trying to make myself as uh, impactful of a player as I can. Um, yeah, I think that's basically, that covers it, but... <laughs> well, it's a difficult challenge. I know myself, I have a real problem with putting on the blinders and just focusing on what's in front of me. <laughs> so that's whenever exactly I play with what anybody, I do. <laughs> it's so bad. I'm like, I'm in it. I'm in yeah. it. And I'm overzealous, yeah. and I'm going to get shut down in about a hot second, but I'm at least going to take somebody with me, or at least that's the hope. And yeah, it probably exactly. never happens. But <laughs> exactly, yeah. I, I either show up or I don't, and that's kind of an issue right now. I want to kind of work on being more consistent, so... Well, it's, uh, it's definitely a great place to work towards that, especially especially yeah. over the course of these weeks as we go through the Swiss format. And, you know, I'm actually I'm really, really excited going into this, you know, speaking with you and also as why goose as well, kind of understanding, you know, what your compositions look like and, you know, your teams that this I feel this could be a very, very quite high level fight between the two of you and and not to again dive too much into it i know Zwigus was very confident in expressing that he is a viper viper dominant player what what agent is really one that resonates with you um so i actually kind of started off uh i started off kind of playing in the open beta as a, a breach main okay and i've kind of always really enjoyed breach even when like that uh, patch then <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> it's definitely nice um but uh, kind of throughout after the game released and all that stuff, I kind of started playing a lot more Brimstone because I really liked I really liked having um, coming from Counter Strike, having utility that you know is similar to Counter Strike with smokes and flashes. Mm -hmm. And um, Brimstone, I just thought was super awesome in terms of uh, just being able to drop those right down exactly where you want them instead of having to do a fancy lineup like in Counter Strike. So um, I also a lot of times would be playing with friends who maybe weren't as uh, experienced in Counter-Strike and stuff like that. And so I could really support the team really well with uh, with the Smokes in terms of um, playing Brimstone. So I played a lot of him and kind of shifted focus to Brimstone. Um, and I could still kind of frag out with him, which was a lot of cool, really fun too. Um, but yeah, I mean, with this new Breach patch now, it's hard not to play him. Right? Uh, You're sitting there like, man, that looks so pretty. Can oh, I, yeah. It's do... amazing. <laughs> I mean, I thought I thought he was great before. I understand why he wasn't totally meta, but I still thought he was a solid agent um, and a lot of fun. I mean, he's got the ability to support the team with his flashes from a distance. Mm -hmm. and he can flash through walls. I mean, that's that's amazing. Yeah, uh, his kit can be very very <laughs> oppressive. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, he can just also just take map control like by himself, which is insane too. So I I think now more than ever with his 
very overpowered uh, flash kit, uh, which I'm sure will be nerfed at some point. But <laughs> for now, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, we'll it's, see. It's, it's uh, for all those who hate it, we'll hope for its change. And for all that love Sage, we'll see her once again. Um. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a tough hit for us. We've got a, a, a resident Sage player. Really? Tuna. Oh, yeah. man. Okay. He's, he's now, been taking I, it again, hard. I always got to touch on that. It's <laughs> it's one of so so. Where has that focus shifted then? Let's let's ask yeah. that question. Where has the shift Great. gone to? Um. Well, he's. I think he's been trying to find his place. He's been. He actually started playing a little jet and trying to op a little bit, okay. which is hilarious because they just nerfed the op, and it's like this yeah. guy can't catch a break. So. <laughs> <laughs> so hurdles. Um, hurdles galore. I, he mentioned last in the last practice he's um, might be trying to play some more Sova, so I'm excited to see. Okay. Um, he's really interested in doing all the different lineups and uh, helping the team with that kind of utility. So I think we might try to work that in. Okay. For now, we've got a guy Nanner on Sova. Um, he's got a little bit more experience on the character, so mm -hmm. or on the agent, and uh, so I think you might see some of that um, okay. tomorrow. So definitely be on the lookout for that. So now, uh, would you say that that's the individual to kind of keep an eye on if we were to do that? Or is there one other particular player that you'd say, if you want to see some crazy action, look no further than X? That, yeah, that's a tough one. I would I would say I wouldn't count anybody out, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, yeah, sure. Uh, Nanner. We've also, and Tuna, um, whatever he ends up playing, I think mm -hmm. Tuna's always got a, a nice impact on the round. Um We've also got uh, Caminator on Omen, uh, and he's basically an Omen one trick. So he's got all the flashy <laughs> plays in his pocket. So definitely keep an eye on him if you want to see some exciting Omen plays. Okay. Got um, a lot of one tricks. You had the Sage, you had the Omen, <laughs> you, had, you, you were Breach for a while, uh, kind of venturing yeah. out. So there's a, there's a lot of yeah. one focus there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, we've got uh, our Captain Nick, Hella Energy on Cypher. Mm -hmm. He's basically a Cypher one trick. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of one tricks, but uh, I can I can fill that you know, ship right there. I myself am a cipher one trick. It's so bad. Yeah, I don't yeah. do anything else but cipher. Yeah. <laughs> and Nick has been um he was brand new to the game when we kind of started. Uh, he's he's our iron player, and the amount that he's improved in just like the past couple months is awesome and insane. And he's been known to clutch out a few big rounds. So okay. I would definitely you know keep an eye on him. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's exciting to hear. Looking forward to that. So, I mean, we, you know, kind of reaching, you know, the climax of the discussion again, want to be respectful of your time. So going into this weekend, you know, kind of talked a little bit again with uh, Zwei Goose about, you know, map selection and what your expectations are. Like, what are you looking forward to tomorrow? And what are you in the same boat that you dislike Ascent? Um, I, I don't personally mind Ascent. Um, it may not be my favorite map, but I don't I don't mind playing okay. it. Um, I do get kind of annoyed when you play it like four times in a row in yes. matchmaking. Or something, I will you know. agree with but that. <laughs> same with every map, right? Uh, but yeah, I think um, we don't really have any maps that we're considerably better on or worse on. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, Tuna, Tuna Kato, our, um, our ex Sage main, uh, did a lot of um, <laughs> analysis of our past, uh, our past practices, mm -hmm. and he found out that we actually aren't doing so well on bind. So okay. that was just a map that we recently have been practicing on and the trying to improve are on. There. The stats, stats are, are there. there. Okay. Well, that's, that's definitely something to kind of go into this knowing, and for sure, probably if anything, going to ban that um, amongst Ascent. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> just try, maybe, yeah. just we'll try to play the pro strats of which ones are banned to go into. Um, yeah. Well, you know, with with that being said, going into this, we we wish you and and Zwaigu so much so much uh, positive energy going into this. So, are there any final words that you'd like to say either to you know fellow coworkers that might be watching, or your teammates that might be watching, or even to your opponent, which is going to be Generous Motors tomorrow? Uh, no, I guess just thanks for all the support. And uh, I'm, I love our team. We're, we're a big, really awesome group of guys. We always have a, a great time together. And we've all been really working on improving lately, which has been really awesome to see. Um, and I'm looking forward to a good match with GM tomorrow. So Thank you. Fantastic. It's going to be an exciting one. I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you so very much for your time. I really, really, truly do appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And just sharing a little bit of it with us is, is a great privilege. And for those of you that are here, we're going to go to a brief break before getting back for the climax to talk about tomorrow. Also how to be involved. So don't go anywhere because we'll be back in just a second.
Hello and welcome back, friends. Told you to be quick. Yes, indeed, that was the second interview we had today from Red Hat. Both were massive sports going into this, giving us the inside not only about their team, their strategies, their ideas, what they look to accomplish in this, what they have already accomplished. It has been quite the day. And for those that are interested in seeing how this, which I honestly feel is going to be a very close matchup between these two, this goes underway tomorrow at 11 a.m. PST. So I cannot wait to start this and see who is going to claim victory between this Generous Motors and the Red Hat Uplink. And again, if you'd like to find out more information, you could definitely go to the links in the lower section of this Twitch channel. Also seeing the links for all of the, you know, Discord, uh, CEA.GG that you can be involved with and maybe even get your company involved as well to be among the ranks of these competitors for Valorant. But again, there's seven titles so it doesn't have to be just valorant if you're a fan of you know league of legends or if you're a fan of you know overwatch or dota or any any of the sort there are so many on this lineup that we've got again that you can just be involved with and it's a great opportunity it all goes towards a great cause a charity of your company's choice i myself like i said at the start I'm trying to see if i can wiggle my way into having our own corporate team for my day-to-day -day company so i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day it's been an absolute pleasure stick around for tomorrow's matchup because it's going to be quite a doozy and we'll look to see you then friends have a wonderful rest of your friday evening